Welcome to Meaningful Mornings. A seeker in our community wrote to me asking me to give her son advice. He's going to college and what she's doing is she's collecting a piece of advice from different people. She's going to put this in a jar and when he goes to college, she'll give this to him so that whenever he feels confused or afraid or sad, he can turn to that advice. And it will be random, correct? You shake it up and this comes out. I have never heard of this. <laughs> My parents' advice was, don't come back until you're finished. <laughs> this is a lovely idea. I'm looking for your help. What advice would you give a fresh person in college. I'm not fond of that word freshman. A fresh person in college. Share in the chat. Keep on keeping on. Mm -hmm. Don't embarrass your parents, right? That's the advice you would give. <laughs> Don't do laundry at 2 a.m. Try getting out of your com comfort zone. Find good friends. <laughs> Don't get into any trouble. That's really low standard advice, no? <laughs> be positive. Don't be extroverted. Look at it all as a challenge. Mm -hmm. These are lovely forms of advice. Now, most who are attending Meaningful Mornings have graduated from college, yes? Are you following this advice? <laughs> How quick we are to type out advice for others. Do you follow this? Do the right thing. Even this will pass. Be calm. <laughs> Meaningful Mornings is a workshop for us not to give advice, but to follow advice. And if you follow advice, Everyone will want your advice. We are flowing through a technical orientation towards karma yoga or karma yajna. We all have reverence for Prince Arjuna. Remember though, right now Prince Arjuna is still experiencing moha, bhaya, and shoka. We know this goes away. We know Prince Arjuna becomes content, but that's not his feeling right now. So Sri Krishna is orienting him again and again and again. That's what we do with people who are confused, correct? We do that with our own language. If I use a Sanskrit word, I keep explaining it in English in different ways so that we're oriented towards that. So here's a very simple orientation for me, for all of us. Right here, right now, our default, our propensity is to engage in sakama karma. Sakama karma, karma means action. Sakama means selfish. What is a selfish action? where this is not for others, this is for me. This is not for that which is <coughs> immaterial, immaterial meaning compassion, generosity, etc., but rather is material, that I can compare and I can measure, selfish. The way to grow out of sakama karma is to grow into Nishkama karma. Nishkama, which really means niskama, without selfishness. 
In other words, selfless actions. My observation about this is we've really reduced our standards that a selfless action is something that you do randomly or that a noble person does. But I've already shared right action means it is focused on selflessness and self-development. In other words, it is not for you. That should be our standard. This should become our default, our propensity. Selfless action. Selfless action facilitates, creates, cultivates antakarana shuddha. Shuddha means purity. Another word I use is preparation. Antakarana means your software particularly the mind and intellect. When we are living selflessly, our mind and intellect become quieter, become stiller, they become more integrated. Shared differently, karma yoga will prepare us. Antakarana shuddha then facilitates Ahankara Tyaga. Ahankara Tyaga, which means Tyaga to let go of. Ahankara, the ego. That is the wrong Atma. So when my mind and intellect are quiet and still, then what can I do? I can observe the ego and I will feel this is not me. I will throw that down fully. And this naturally then leads to the right ananda. So antakarana shuddha, preparation. Ahankara tyaga, process. Antakarana shuddha, karma yoga. Ahankara tyaga, jnana yoga. Does that framework work better for everyone? The key point that I'm trying to make here, if you're not prepared, you can't engage the process. If you don't engage the process, one can never be peaceful. The contentment that Sri Krishna focused on, that will never describe us. Sri Krishna has taught a lot with love. Now he's going to teach with, I don't want to use the word fear, but tough love. This is an intense verse. We are on verse Six. Karmindriyani samyamya ya aste manasasmaran indriyarthan vimudhatma mityacharasa uchate. Indriya means organ. Here Sri Krishna references. Karma Indriya, which means organs of response. Samyama, they are restrained. They are controlled. When Sri Krishna shares the organs of response are restrained or controlled, he also means the organs of perception are. We call those jnana indriyas. Okay, so we have two sets of organs. <coughs> organs of perception and organs of interaction. Input, output. Clear? Sri Krishna is describing one who's controlling this. Fine, that's happening externally. In the next quarter, yaaste, they're sitting like this. However, Manasasmaran, their minds are remembering. Their minds are distracted. Their minds are not here. Where are their minds? And just to connect this, Indriyarthan. Their minds are on these sense objects. So externally, like this. But internally, everywhere. 
Shri Krishna is describing this because where does Prince Arjuna want to be right now? He doesn't want to be in this field. He wants to be on the mountains by himself. And Sri Krishna is sharing with him, your body will be there, but your mind will not be there. Your mind will be here in this field, etc. For us, this is called suppression. Where externally we are one way, internally we are another way. And Sri Krishna is emphasizing here again, Prince Arjuna's default or propensity to not act. Vivek feels that I'm going to be most peaceful if I don't have to do anything. Sri Krishna is cutting that out. Such a personality, Vimudhatma, Vimudhatma, that's the third quarter. Mudha means foolish. And I've shared with you in many ways. What is the more practical definition of Mudha? Moody. <laughs> Someone who's very moody is a Mudha. <laughs> but now there's a prefix, VI which means most foolish. One who's like this is most foolish. They think that they don't depend on action, but they live by likes and dislikes, which means they're highly dependent on action. Whenever this term comes to you about renouncing action, Please don't misunderstand that. Please don't misinterpret that. It is renouncing the dependency on action. And here they think, I don't depend on action, but they have likes and dislikes. And so for all of us, here's a test. How do you know if you're dependent on action? If you have this attachment, this aversion. And now he summarizes this in the fourth quarter in one word. Sa'uchete, this type of living, externally controlled, internally wild, such a person is most foolish and can be known as a mityacharaha. Mityacharaha, strong word. Achara means one's behaviors or manners. And tell me, what does the word mitya mean? What does mitya mean? I did explain this in the last chapter. It means false. It means fake, illusory, exactly. In a simple English word, hypocrite. Mityachara is a hypocrite. And this is a very choice word because the word Arjuna means the exact opposite. Arjuna means integrity. Yet, and that's his name, but he's not living like that. He's living like a hypocrite. I don't know anyone else like that. All of us with our divine, <laughs> divine, divine names. I'll share a visualization for you about the seriousness of living like a hypocrite. If you're sitting in a car, you have your foot on the brake, right? You're controlling everything, but you also have your foot on the accelerator. That's the mind that goes everywhere. What happens to your car? It just breaks down, right? This is a dangerous way to live. Because our vasanas or blueprints are not created by our hands and our forehead and our digestive system. It is created by the mind. So though Vivek may not be eating cheesecake or going to a party right now, but if I'm thinking it, I'm creating more vasanas. I'm deepening my blueprints that I was born to exhaust. What am I doing? I'm making matters worse. And my final thought here is, 
and I'll elaborate tomorrow. When there is this disintegrity or disintegration of one's personality, you stop trusting yourself. Because your intellect will share, today I'm going to go for a jog, today I'm going to be patient, today I'm going to ask for forgiveness, but you know you're not gonna do it. So when you come to this awful position, you're stuck. No ideal lasts. And it's because of this illusory way of living. I say one thing, but I do another thing. I think one thing, I say another thing. Reflect lots on this. I will review this again because of how serious this is. Your application from last Friday was for you to be extraordinarily patient. How many of you have been trying this? Very good. Keep up with it. You can stop it tomorrow at 12, 12 p.m., but until tomorrow at 12 p.m., continue to be extraordinarily patient. Tomorrow is one of our guides, significant days. Tomorrow will have a special meaningful mornings. So be ready for all of that. Shanti, shanti, shanti. Be safe, be sound, be serene, be happiness.